Hey, so 4.1, we're going to talk a little bit about polynomial functions and then models uh, further on. A um, little boring here, a little bit. We need to work on some vocabulary and that kind of stuff. So let's see what we have. So a polynomial function is a function of the form, and then they gave us this kind of an equation. Um, we need to make sure that we understand that a, a, n minus 1, so those would be the coefficients, that they're real numbers, and n needs to be a non-negative integer, so n could be like 1, 2, 3, etc. So the powers here have to be positive. And then when we just add and subtract terms, it's considered a polynomial. Alright, so what does that mean in terms of like a question? So, determine which of the following are polynomial functions for those that are not, or for those that are state to degree, that would be your highest exponent. And for those that are not, say y. Okay. So first thing we check is do we have positive exponents? We do. Nothing funky over here. 5, so is your largest. So this is a polynomial function. And the degree is going to be the 5. Okay. B. Uh, exponents are all positive. And let's see what else do we have. Uh, degree of 2. I see a fraction exponent. So that is not a polynomial function. Okay, so no. And the reason you could say here would be we have a fraction as an exponent. Keep in mind that that actually would have meant this. 3 and then x to the third is actually the third root of x to the first. So it's a cube root function. Negative 3. No negative exponents either. We said that they had to be positive or non negative integers. So they actually need to add 0 here. Um, but definitely no. No, that is because of the negative exponents. And keep in mind that a negative exponent would have meant 2 divided by nx cubed, so that's irrational. A negative 5. That's the line through the, or the horizontal line through negative 5. And that's a good thing I just corrected myself. So it's a non-negative integer. So 0 is a non-negative integer. So could you think of this as an x to the 0, which would be worth 1? So could I write that then as a negative 5 times 1, and then I would be back at a negative 5? So I think I can. So that yes, and the degree here is zero. And then different letter, so don't let that throw you off. Um, I don't see any division or anything else that's funky that's going on, so we're, we're good in terms of it being a polynomial, but for the degree, we'd have to multiply this out, so that would be a 3s cubed, so this is a third degree. So don't forget to multiply things out. All right, summary of properties of the graphs of polynomial functions. Okay, you guys already know a bunch of polynomial functions. So here are, so we don't have a degree listed at all. It's the zero function. That's just the x-axis. Here's a constant. That's the one we just saw up there. U of x is 5. So U of x is 5 was an example of this. So that's a zero degree. It's a constant. It's a horizontal line. Uh, linear functions are polynomial functions. So 2x plus 3. Um, the degree is 1 because the exponent here would be 1. We know a second degree, we call that a quadratic, the graph's a parabola. And so we already know a whole bunch of these. Okay? Graphically speaking, polynomial functions look like this somewhat. Okay? If they're not straight lines, they look like smooth, continuous curves. Um, a straight line is smooth and it is continuous, so it doesn't have any corners. So polynomial functions look like this. So this is not a polynomial function. It has a corner here, so that's that's a bad thing. It has a, they call this a cusp, you don't have to know that word, but it's when it comes together in a point. You can't have any cap, uh, gaps because of this thing, they have to be continuous. You can't have any holes either, so that again would imply it's not continuous. Recognizing if something is a polynomial function graphically is usually not a real challenge. The only thing you have to watch out for a little bit is 
uh, like an absolute value, would not be considered a polynomial, even though it is continuous with its, that corner over here. Okay, a specific polynomial function would be a power function. And a power function is a monomial, so it only has one term, and it includes a number here, a variable, and then an exponent. So these are all power functions. This is a first degree. There's a second degree, a third, and a fourth degree. Um, we use these sort of to base all of our other graphs on. So it's important to know a little bit about them and understand what they look like. So for example, if I look at this negative 5x squared, it's a second degree, um, that gives me a bunch of information right there. I know that it's going to go through 0, 0. Because it's an even number here, I know that it's a quadratic in this case, but it's flipped, but it, it means it, it goes, it looks like this. It either goes down, opens down, or it opens up. And the negative 5, the negative flipped it, and the 5 just makes it go faster or slower. So what would the graph of a negative 5x to the fourth look like? Well, honestly, it would look a lot like this. It would share this point. It would still be flipped. But because it's a to the fourth, it would run on the inside of the square. So this is an x to the fourth. And the first one that I drew was your x squared. And that's just determined by the power. So the higher the power, the faster your y values go up. Um, and, then, and that's it. But otherwise, they, they look the same. Not only do they share this point, they actually share three points. Both of these will go through 0, 0. So they both go through 0, 0. In this case, they both go through uh, 1, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 1 because of the flip part. Okay? So how about your odd function? So even, like squares, odds then should be like cubes. So an odd function is going to look a lot like this. So if you look through, look at it, this it still goes through 0, 0. It does go through 1, 1, but then at a negative 1, it goes through negative 1. So all odd power functions will have these points in common, unless, again, we flip it. So what's the difference between a cube and a 5? Once well, again, it's how fast do my y values go up. So here and here, they will look exactly the same, but after that, the 5 will go up faster. It's sort of hard the way I do it. What happens over here is that it's flatter. It takes a little while longer to get to, um, to actually get to 1. So the blue one is the x to the 5. So let me see if I can illustrate that here in the table. So, so between 0 and 1, this one's actually flatter. So what happens, for example, if you did a half? Well, if this was an x to the fifth, when you do this with a half, you get 1 over 32. If I had done that with an x cubed, with the x cubed, if I had plugged in a half, I would be at 1 over 8 already. So you can see that at a half, this one's at 1 over 8, which is not very high, but it's way higher than 1 over 32. So that's what happens between 0 and 1, or 0 and a negative. That's sort of this last statement over here. And the same thing actually happens with your evens. Okay. So how can I use that stuff that I just showed you over here? How can I use it to graph? And these aren't power functions, but these are transform power functions. So this one actually starts out as an x to the fourth. So what happens to make it an x plus one to the fourth? So that is a shift left of one, right? Okay, so I used to be here, and I had I had a dot at 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, so we're 1 to the left, so now we're here. The negative 2, so we're going to make it a negative 2x plus 1 to the fourth. The negative flips it, so now I'm here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I, mean, I did not shift all my points. So we were here and there. Flipping it puts you here and there. And then the last part is that the 2 makes it go a little bit faster, right? So the 2 multiplies the y values by 2. So we're still here, that's 0. But this became negative 2 
It's out of space. And that looks a lot like... It looks pretty much the same as this one, doesn't it? Okay, and that's sort of the idea here, that things to the second, to the fourth, to the sixth, they're all going to look alike very much, especially in the, in the parts over here. And if they're odds, they all look alike as well. So, if I had to illustrate this a little bit better in terms of the difference, um, actually, the way I drew it, so I have to draw this one in blue. So, the, to the fourth, so if the red one actually was a negative 2 exponent, it's 1 squared, then to the fourth, it would just do this. It would still go through that point, it would flatten out over here a little, and go through that point. But you can sort of see already how hard that is to draw by hand. So don't, if I ask you about this, make sure that you list these things correctly, and then you should be fine. And then you do have to have these points here correct, and that's okay. How about an x to the 5? So x to the 5th, that's going to look like a, a wiggle. So it does this. And then the only thing that this 2 does, so we can make it a 2 plus an x to the 5th. So that's a shift up of 2. So we end up here. 1, 2, 1, 2, and other than that, it goes up pretty fast. And then on this side, it goes down pretty fast. And that's it. <clears throat> okay? Relative to the cube, I try to make it a little flatter here at the bottom. But again, you can see how sort of it, it's a challenge to make the graph look reasonably well while you're trying to do that. So, thank you.